awesome. Okay, so the topic which we are discussing today is uh, already we guys have seen introductory part of uh, IGST. After that, we guys have seen uh, you know even some definitions of IGST, and uh, certain definitions are left, but uh, those are not that much important, and those are not that much related to the concept of IGST. So I thought, uh, why don't I go for next topic? So I'm going to start your next topic in today's session. I hope my voice and uh, everything is clear. If it is clear, you can write in chat box also. And uh, I request you all to be there for every lecture which we are conducting through online mode. So I hope you will understand. Once again, please allow me to share my screen. And once the screen is shared, please let me know whether my screen is visible or not. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. My sure. yes. Let me go for my you know presentation. Where it is? I have I have kept it. I don't know. I'll find out. Okay, here it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just wait for a few seconds. Okay, I'm going to open the PPT now. Is my screen visible? Yes, sir. Can you see the slide? What is written? Gear stay long. So I think that this kind of portion already we guys have gone through and we have seen. And uh, the things uh, which we are going to see, just I'm going to highlight here. And I will go for, you know, the thing that I want to tell you in today's session. I think uh, GST law and GST act we guys have seen in a thorough manner. As I told you, there are four different parts of GST. And those parts can be called as, uh, you know, subtypes of GSTs. And we have seen everything about this, like CGST, IGST, SGST, UTGST and the GST Compensation of the State Act, which is applicable to the entire India or the whole India that we guys have seen. There is no problem as such. Uh, uh, when it comes to CGST, as we know that it is applicable to Jammu and Kashmir also now. Here it is not, you know, uh, updated from my end, but this is applicable for the entire nation now because Jammu, is also, Jammu and Kashmir is also the part and parcel of India now. as uh, Central Government of India has already removed Article 370, which was there for Jammu and Kashmir. So that has been removed, and this is what I can say like that uh, CGST is applicable for Jammu and Kashmir also. Similarly, this IGST is also applicable for the whole India, including Jammu and Kashmir, as well as yes, CGST is also applicable for Jammu and Kashmir, um, sorry, uh, for the whole India, no doubt at all. So these are the things which we have seen and when it comes to UTGST, no doubt at all UTGST is applicable for all the union territories of India, including Andaman, Nicobar, Iceland, Lakshadweep, Dadra, Nagar, Haveli, Deep, Daman and Diu, Chandigarh, Delhi and newly, you know, uh, constituted two different, uh, you know, uh, union territories such as Jammu and Kashmir. So this is applicable for all these uh, uh, union territories of India. So this is the things which we have seen in past lectures. And there is no worry at all about all these things. When it comes to the next one and uh, here what we are going to see. Uh, levy, how it will be levied. And this is the point of... I'm going to talk about how the uh, levy of GST or IGST is applicable. Levy means what? The way of charging the tax. That, that is none other than, you know, the way we charge at the lay, the way we apply the tax on certain things that can be called as levy of GST. So how the GST is levied on goods and services in India by considering all these acts such as uh, CGST, SGST, IGST, UTGST, and uh, GST Compensation Act. So when it comes to the uh, charge, when it comes to the levy of GST on different goods and uh, you know services, then how it can be done? So I'm going to tell you how it can be done. Here uh, you can see the things that I would like to tell you about the levy that is given in brown color. 
so that you can see what we can levy. We can levy GST, a levy of GST for charge. There are different charges that we, um, we there are different methods of charging or uh, levy of GST. So levy of GST through forward charge, levy of GST on reverse charge, and levy on e-commerce operator for specified services. From that we can understand. But when it comes to, you know, what do we call it, uh, when it comes to uh, levy of GST on reverse charge, again, there are two parts, A reverse charge on specific, specified goods or services notified. Whatever goods are or services can be called as notified and those are specified again on those we go for reverse charge. Similarly, we also go for reverse charge on inward supply from unregistered person. If, if the person is unregistered, then it can be called as reverse charge on inward supply from unregistered uh, person. So under this particular things, we go for CGST, SGST, IGST, UGST. Similarly, when we go for reverse charge on specified goods, then again, same thing are applicable. When we go for levy of GST forward charge, then all those things are applicable. So this way, we can understand the way of And uh, I hope you guys are understanding what you are going to tell you. This will be the best part of uh, thing that I would like to inform you through this particular slide. So this one is just a part of introduction how it can be levied and the way we level it, uh, we charge it. Then, as we know that uh, this one is the way of uh, going to understand what is interest rate and interest rate. Classification of supply as intrastate and interstate. Here we are going to talk about the concept of intrastate and interstate in a detailed manner. And the way we are going to charge it and the way we charge taxes also that we are going to cover here. So I request you all to go through this. So just look at what I'm going to tell you. Uh, here. When it comes to the classification of intrastate and interstate, already I told you the concept of intrastate and interstate. But uh, through this pictorial presentation, you can understand the concept of intra as well as you can understand the concept of interstate. First of all, we are going to talk about intrastate. What can be called as intrastate and what is the concept of interstate also we are going to see in a thorough manner. So just look at this. What I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about the thing and the concept of what intrastate. So here, what they have said, if you look at the first one, that is intrastate, location of the supplier and place of supply. Remember, location of the supplier and the place of supply, both are in one state or both are in same state. When the location of the supplier and the when location of the when the place of supply both are in same state it can be called as intrastate for example the supplier is from baramati and the person who is going to receive the player receive the goods or services is in pune for example so the supplier and the location of the supplier is in maharashtra even the place of supply is also in maharashtra so this is what this kind of transaction is called as intrastate moving on to the next one and then we are going to see something about interstate interstate means what within two different states so here in this case of interstate transaction the the location of the supplier and the place of supply both are in different states it means what the supplier is from india sorry not sorry sorry simply sorry it means the supplier is from maharashtra and the person who is going to receive the goods is not from maharashtra but he is from karnataka as such it means what the location of the supplier is Baranati, for example, and the place of supply is in Bangalore. So it can be called as, or it will be called as interstate transaction. So what we can understand from this example, we can understand simple things from this example, and those things are very simple. What are those? See, location of the supplier and the place of supply are not in same state, or they are different. And this is what it is called as interstate transaction i hope you guys have understood what i mean to say so here i have given the examples also and from those examples you can understand i think uh, <coughs> sorry you guys are aware with these two concepts so if you want to understand the concept of interstate and interstate you need to have the knowledge of two different concepts again 
what are those two concepts we need to have we need to have the knowledge of those two concepts first of all we need to understand the concept of location of supplier and secondly we need to understand the place of supply location of the supplier means what the place of supplier where he where he operates his business the person who is operating business from baramati itself for example registered with the gst authority so whatever is the location which is registered by the supplier with the gst authorities at the time of registering for gst is called as location of the supplier in simple term or in simple manner what you guys have to understand you guys have to understand the location of the supplier is nothing but what the place of supplier or the place of the person who is supplying the goods or services now the question is what the question is place of supply most of the people they get confused place of supply means not the place of supplier place of supply means what where the goods and services are actually supplied for example i am receiving the goods or services so goods and services are supplied at my place or at my door so wherever i stay for example if i stay in baramati if i stay in pune so the place of supply should be or would be uh, baramati or pune so you what you guys have to remember location of the supplier means what the place of supplier you guys have to remember and place of supply is nothing but what the place of receiver the person who is going to receive the goods or services and that kind of thing is called as place of supply remember i hope you guys have understood and if you want to understand if if you want to identify the transaction by looking at the place of supply and the location of the supplier you need to understand these two concepts first and by looking at the location of the supplier even uh, by looking at the place of supply you can easily understand the concept of intrastate and interstate so this is what these two concepts are most important one as far as understanding the concept of intrastate and interstate transaction i hope you guys have understood so by understanding these two we can easily segregate we can easily find out we can easily divide between intrastate as well as interstate so here i have given two examples and this from these two examples you can easily understand whether it is intrastate or interstate so if you look at the question sorry example number 1 so it e whereas the location of the supplier is also state e so this kind of relation can be called as so both are in same state the location of the supplier and even the place of supply is also is in same state so when this kind of transaction is taking place it can be called as intrastate supply and whenever we go for or whenever intrastate transaction is taking place for that particular intrastate supply or transaction cgst and sgst or utgst is the people so the type of transaction decide the tax which is applicable remember if you want to go for the application of taxes then you need to decide the type of transaction which is taking place first of all you need to decide this whether the transaction is intrastate or interstate if it is intrastate then cgst and sgst and there is an option for utgst uh, sometimes if it is taking place in union territory then instead of sgst we go for utgst but these two types of taxes are applicable here i hope you will understand it now moving on to the second example and uh, this example is an example of interest interstate look at the transaction look at the example that i am going to tell you here in this case the location of the supplier is from state a and the place of supply is from state b so here there are two different states and when whenever we uh, go for a transaction between two different states it becomes interstate supply and for interstate supply or interstate transaction of goods and services i gst is applicable and that is our core area by the way so i hope you guys understood the concept of intra and inter in a very precise manner i think so and if you have any doubt or question as such please let me know something about this 
otherwise i can go ahead are you there in the meeting or not so me hath na meeting made yes sir karte na me kya sangto the ho yes sir yes hmm hello येते ना आवाज माझा यस सर हो सर एकच मिनिट हां so i hope you guys have understood understood yes sir okay. now we are going to talk about supply of goods and all services in the course of interstate trade or commerce section 7 act 2017 as well as according to the section 7 of igst act 2017 we are going to understand this supply of goods and or services in the course of interstate trade or commerce if the as i told you igst is applicable whenever we go for interstate transaction whenever we go for interstate transaction the supply of goods and services then only this one igst is applicable for intra state igst is not applicable for intra state cgst and sgst or utgst is applicable so we are not talking about intra state we are talking about igst sorry we are talking about inter state so whenever inter state transaction is taking place then we need to go for this one so look at this sub welcome हेलो एक मिनट क्या जरूरत है क्या जरूरत है इसके आते सर एक देंगे नहीं क्यों नहीं देंगे हाँ देंगे क्यों नहीं देंगे ओके सो आई वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट यू नो सप्लाई ऑफ गुड्स एंड और सर्विसेज इन द कोर्स ऑफ इंटरस्टेट ट्रेड और कॉमर्स अंडर सेक्शन सेवन ऑफ आईजीएसटी एक्ट 2017 सो हियर इन दिस केस व्हाट वी गाइस हैव टू गो फॉर what we are going to learn that i'm going to show you in this particular five different segments if you look at this the first one location of the supplier and the place of supply are in two different states whenever we go for interstate type of transaction or trade or commerce we need to remember one thing the location of the supplier and the place of supply they are not from the same state and this is what two different states are there and uh, this is what it is necessary to understand it is necessary to remember the place of supply and the location of the supplier both are from different states and this is what it is called as igst or inter interstate transaction then two different union territories it may be it is not always states sometimes it may be taken place between two different union territories also or sometimes it may be taken place between one state and one union territory so it should be deferred so see uh, not only uh, we are we are not going to restrict the concept of interstate 
not only we are going to consider the states two different states we are going to consider one state one union territory we are going to consider two different union territories and we are going to consider two different states if the transaction is taking place between these two kind of things can be called as interstate second one as i told you when goods and services are supplied as a part of import suppose if we import something from another nation another country it can be also called as interstate transaction and for that i gst is applicable i hope you guys are understanding what i mean to say when the supply of goods and services are taken place as far as uh, this uh, you know import is concerned so when it is imported don't forget that for that one i gst is applicable moving on to the next one and there we are going to talk about another one and what is that just look at this supply of goods and goods and or services when the supplier is located in india and the place of supply is outside india look at this we have seen the example of import in case of import supplier is not from india supplier is always from foreign country and the place of supply is in india but here in case of this third type of uh, thing that we are going to see here as far as the supplier of goods or services when the supplier is located in india when supplier of india is supplying goods to another nation or another country so the place of supply is in outside india but the supplier is from india so this is totally vice versa than the import in case of import we are the place of supply and supplier is from outside nation and here in this case we are supplying goods so we are the suppliers and another nation is the place of supply so this is called as export and this is called as what this is called as export so in case of export this is going to happen i hope you guys are understand understood what i meant to say then supply of goods another one sorry another one that is the next one the supply of goods and services or services or sorry the supply of goods and or services to or by a sales developer or and sales unit sales unit so from this we can understand we supply goods to sales sales i told you the meaning of word the sales in the past lecture sales means what special economic zones so government has uh, you know uh, declared some units as sales units and uh, you know they take care of that sales means what specific purpose for special economic zone purpose these units are created by the government and certain exemptions are given so whenever we make a transaction with sales developer or sales unit it will be treated as uh, interstate transaction though it is in our country it doesn't matter if the sales is located in our country no doubt so if we go for a transaction for example a supplier of pune is supplying the supplying the supplying the goods of sales which is in pune itself it is also called as interstate transaction remember jar sales punyat asel punyatla supply ne dela goods supply kela asel tari sudha apan tela interstate transaction consider karna ahot so when we supply like that to sales or sales developer it will be treated as sales or it will be treated as interstate transaction another one that we are going to see and the last one of this particular slide any supply of goods and or services in the taxable territory not being an intra state supply and not covered elsewhere in the in this section so whatever we supply and which is not a part of intra state and which is not covered as intra state it can be called as it can be treated as inter state supply simply they have said like this so i hope you guys have understood the things which, which i wanted to tell you about the interstate transaction according to the section 7 of igst act 2017 so we have seen this uh, section 7 in five different categories or five different segments segment of one talks about why it is called as interstate 
and they have given the parameters to consider interstate. Parameter one says that it should be taken place between two different states. Then it says that it can be taken place between two different union territories. And the last one, it has been said like that. It can be taken place between one state and one union territories. I hope you guys have understood the first segment. Second segment talks about import. If we import something from another nation, it will be treated as IGST or it will be treated as interstate transaction. So here in this case of import, supplier is from another country, whereas the place of supply is in our country. Third one, it was talking about export. Here in this case, the supplier is from our country and the place of supply is in outside the country. And this is what it is called as interstate trade or commerce, according to the Section 7 of IGST Act 2017. Fourth one talks about the sales and the sales developer. Whatever supply of goods and services that we make to the sales or sales developer or sales unit, it can be called as interstate transaction. And moving to the last one, uh, apart from that, if it is not covered under the intrastate supply, then it will be treated as interstate transaction. According to this, we guys have gone through. and the concept of interstate. I hope you have understood whatever I mean to say as far as interstate transaction is concerned. Understood? Yes, sir. Now, now we are going to talk about, now we are going to talk about uh, place of supply or place for supply under GST. And from that, we are going to Understand. Just give me one second only. I'm getting one important call. Let me attend the call, please. Yes, flowers are here from Baraman. Yes, yes. I, yesterday only I have sent my bills and all. Yesterday only I did my courier. Yes, yes, I did everything. Statement of expenses and along with the uh, statement I have sent my bills also. Yeah, by courier. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. okay, now the concept which we are going to see. Am I audible now? Boys and girls? Yes, sir. Okay, reply fast so, so that I can understand whether I am audible or not. Okay, so now the concept which we are going to see is place of supply under GST or IGST. What is place of supply? As I told you, I have told you the concept of place of supply in a brief manner. And now we are going to, going to understand the concept of place of supply in a brief, and not, a, not in a brief, but it is in a precise manner. So that we can understand the concept of place of supply. Uh, see, here what we are going to do. The time I take such, such sort of pictures, those are self-explanatory. And from that you can understand what is the concept of place of supply. Here I have shown two different locations and from those two locations also you can understand the concept of place of supply. Uh, if not, I am here to explain you, no worry at all, look at this. So this is a place of supply and here we are going to talk about the concept of place of supply as far as goods and services also. So. In case of goods, what will be the place of supply? In case of service, what will be the place of supply? That also we are discussing here. Even we are going to talk about the place of supply in case of import, in case of export and so on. So just look at this and try to understand something by looking at this particular slide. So have a look. When it comes to goods, first of all, we are going to talk about goods. So in case of goods, 
basically we go for uh, other than import or export mostly we do two types of activities for example we are the supplier and if we are supplying goods we can supply goods for two different locations we can supply goods within india and we can supply goods outside india also so here this is what i told you uh, i have written here like uh, other than import or export means within the country import or export means outside the country so when uh, mostly the place of supply in case of other than import or export in, is our country and in case of import and export is outside the country similarly when we go for services then here also we have two different locations location of the supplier and location of the recipient if both are from same country it can be called as you know in, uh, it can be called as within the nation either one is outside india out of the supplier or the recipient is not from india then it can be called as import or export clear so we are going to talk about the con country and another one is outside the country and again we are going to talk about these two concepts or these two way of understanding the place of supply by considering two different aspects one is goods and another one is services i hope you are going to understand or you guys are understanding something so the section number 10 is fully dedicated the, uh, the section number 10 of igst act is fully dedicated for place of supply of goods other than goods imported exported so what we are talking about, we are not talking about import or export. We are talking about the goods and services, sorry, not services. We are talking about the goods which are sold or purchased in our country only. And for this particular one, place of supply of goods, other than goods imported or exported, for this particular purpose, there is one special section under the Act GST, and that section number is 10. I hope you guys understood. Remember the section. If your exam will be online, then this kind of question may be asked in the examination. Getting my point. Next. So here we can understand in a very easy manner. Uh, I'll continue my lecture till two o'clock. Four more minutes to go. As I started my session a little bit late, I think seven or eight minutes late it was because of my phone calls and all. So here supply involves movement of goods supply 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 means what whenever we think about the concept of supply we can easily understand supply means what we transfer or we you know send goods from one location to another location so when we send goods from one location to another location there is a movement of goods none other than that and it is called what supply involves movement of goods for example look at this now i'm giving an example of interstate goods or interstate transaction look at this if the supplier is from delhi here in this case if you look at the picture you can easily understand what i mean to say if the supplier is from delhi and the goods are transported to through truck there is no need to understand what sort of mean or mode of transportation they are using we are going to understand only two things whether the supplier is from the same state or not if it is from same same state there is no question of uh, IGST, but if they are different from their states, then no doubt there is a question of IGST. So here in this case, the supplier is from Delhi and the recipient is at Chandigarh. So if you look at this, Delhi is a different state, even Chandigarh is also a different state. Basically, Delhi is a union territory and Chandigarh is the capital city of Punjab and, uh, you know, even it is the capital city of Haryana too. So this one is a common capital city for Chandi, Haryana and Punjab. So uh, these are the states. So this transaction has taken place between uh, one state and one union territory. And this kind of uh, supply is taking place. So this is the supply which is taking place between one state and one union territory. So we are going to understand the location of the supply location or place of supply remember what we are going to dis discuss the topic which we are discussing is what place of supply of goods see here location of goods at the time at which movement terminates from delivery to recipient 
so whatever is the location remember what we are going to discuss we are going to discuss about place of supply place of supply is nothing but what where the goods are actually placed where the goods are actually supplied and here these goods are supplied to chandigarh so chandigarh is the recipient's place or the place of recipient and this is what chandigarh can be called as place of supply i hope you have understood what i mean to say so this is for place of supply and one example which we have seen here and here in this example we guys have understood the supplier is from delhi and the recipient is from chandigarh so whatever is the place of recipient which is in chandigarh so chandigarh can be called as place of supply without fail i hope you have understood the concept of place of place of supply through this example we have so many, so many example to understand the concepts no worry now goods supplied on direction of the third person look at this this one is more interesting one and uh, when i complete this i'll take a break for today's session look at this goods supplied on direction of third person on direction of third person means what suppose you actually wanted to supply goods to me listen uh, actually you are from uh, you are from delhi and you wanted to supply goods to me in baram my wife at pune or for example you supply goods to my wife which is in karnataka for example so on my direction you guys have supplied goods to her or you guys have delivered actually delivered goods at karnataka so wherever the goods are actually delivered that particular that particular thing is called as place of supply at that particular place is called as place of supply so just look at the person third party from mumbai company is at uh, delhi actually company is at delhi company called that third party person about the supply of goods and uh, actually the company is from delhi and the person which is called as third party person is in mumbai so that third party person told it to the company Do not supply goods in Mumbai. Just supply goods to Gurga. So goods are actually delivered to Gurga. So Gurga is the place of supply. Remember, remember, Gurga is the place of supply in this case. So this is for goods supplied on direction of the uh, on direction of the third person. I hope you have understood what I mean to say. and uh, my time is over now and uh, i request you all for just be here for few minutes so that uh, we can understand your doubts and queries before that let me stop my presentation and uh, after stopping my presentation and getting back to my home screen and uh, there i will ask some questions if you or i will ask you guys to ask me some questions if you I have not understood anything else. Have you understood everything? Whatever I taught you today. Yes, sir. Okay. If you have any doubt or question and difficulty or problem as such, you are free to ask your doubts and questions. If you do not have any doubt and question as such, you are free to leave the meeting. I have to go, Shanga. No, sir. Thank you. Any doubt? Or everything is doubtful? <laughs>